Welcome to the Invested Dads podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads podcast, a podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future. Today, we are going to be talking about transitions in your career or job, Josh. That's right. If you are around the Finley, Ohio area, there has been some big changes in the last year or so from some of our top employers. Uh, So Marathon did some layoffs last year, and then Cooper Tire just announced that they're being acquired by Goodyear, uh, which may result in some layoffs as well. So this is kind of what is driving this conversation. But in general, though, we're a lot of people will go through some sort yeah. of job transition, a, a career change throughout their um, life. I saw an article that said about 14% of people are satisfied in their current job. 14? Yeah. So that so, means there's 86% that aren't? Yes. <laughs> so a high <laughs> chance that people will switch careers at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we, we also did an episode, so as a reminder, on that Cooper Tire Goodyear deal, um, and we'll link that in the show notes. Yep. But yeah, we're going to kind of look at things from a couple different perspectives today. And then some. we're going to take a step back and say, hey, where should you always kind of be set up in case something happens? Because you know what happens? Life happens Life sometimes happens. to everyone. Um, so we're going to talk about things from two perspectives. Um, and we also just wanted to point out that there was an excellent blog written by Jess Hanks, a colleague of ours at, uh, over on the Ever- Everyday Advisor um, about this topic as well. So link, we'll link that in the show notes and check that out as well. So Josh, kind of get us going here. Yep. So let's start by talking about just something that everyone should do. How should I be prepared just in case there is a change to my career, my job? All right. So let's talk from a high level. This is, this is applies to just about anyone. And these are things you can do now. And you may say, I love my job and it's stable. That's great. But who knows? Exactly. You know, the future is, is un- unknown. Uh, so the first one is something that we've talked a lot about, and that's have a healthy emergency fund. Not an unhealthy one. Right. That's right. You don't want to be sick. You want it to be <laughs> taking its vitamins that's and right. ready to go. Vitamin uh, C. But a healthy emergency fund is somewhere between three to six months. And we've, yep. had an arc, we've talked about that in an episode. Three months if you are a dual income. So if you have two people that are both earning income, you can be a little shorter because the chances are you both won't have that same job loss. Now, if you work in the same industry or at the same company, maybe you want to go towards the more six months because yeah. if, if there's something that happens with your career, maybe it's both of you. You can but, also lean a little shorter if you are in a highly employable, you know, yes. in-demand job um, market, you know, in an area of the market that, that there's always, there's jobs everywhere, right? Jobs everywhere, yep. Um, so really just look at your situation and say, where's my comfort level? On average, the length of time to find a new job is about six weeks. Okay. So just keep that in mind. That's the long term. That's the average, again, from highly employable that I can walk next door and get a job to yep. someone very specialized and has got to travel across the U.S. just to even find a, a spot. So yep. six months is kind of the average. So that's where it fits in that three to six month window. Somewhere in there gives you some good time. Um, one other thing to do, and this is something that I'm really bad at, is keep your resume up to date. I am too. And I always feel like in back of my mind, I'm like, if I update my resume, it makes it seem like I'm unhappy with doing what I'm doing. Right. And I'm not Mm-mm. at all. So in my mind, I don't have to do it, but you should always do should. it. And it's it's also just, I think, and as a reflect on this, probably a reason that I should start doing it is it also helps you to remember some of the things you know, as you're putting them down on paper. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did work on that project. And you know, as you go through time, you may have better examples and want to just keep those fresh. So Absolutely. Keep your resume up to date. Doesn't mean you need to put it out anywhere. Just nope. have that piece of paper ready to it go. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. Uh, know your fine print. What that means is every job, you have benefits. You have different things that are specific to that job. Know what those are. Oh, yeah. You may be missing out on benefits because you're not taking advantage of them. Does your company offer discounts for certain things just because you work there? Yep. Take advantage of them. Yeah, that so, is, and that is something your HR contact, wherever you work, is going to be very happy to answer a question. They would probably, yes. they would prefer you ask the question mm-hmm. than not. Yes. So uh, there's probably a lot of benefits that a lot of people's companies offer that they're not taking advantage of, and that stands to be for the people who are staying in their job and not yes. having and going to be there forever or yep. whatever. Or if you're transitioning, that's mm-hmm. the same thing because you need to know that side of things on the way out as well. 
So an example of that, I worked at a company where you get an 11% discount just because you worked for that company. Had I not known that, I could have you know, been paying an extra 11% every month on yeah. my cell phone bill, and it was just a perk that they had negotiated. So just know what's out there. Know those special benefits. Know if you have to do certain things. If I get a physical every year, do I get a discount on my premiums for my insurance? All those type of things. On the other end, know the fine print on what your restrictions are. So if I was to go look for another job, is there kind of a two-year, I can't be in the industry type of thing? Non-disclosure, yeah. what sort What are those of things there? Non-compete. Yep. Know what you're getting into in that position. Um, so know the fine print. I also wonder if you are, if, if you're being asked to leave as part of restructuring or whatever, I wonder if a lot of those restrictions are lifted, as yeah. they probably Sometimes. are. Yeah. yeah. And if the company is going out of business, I think it, it doesn't really matter. It's a mute point right. anyways. Yeah. Uh, Number four of this kind of list of things you can do, anybody can do while they're still employed, uh, networking. Ooh, that's it's been a fun one during huge. COVID. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's harder, definitely. But the idea is, you know, get to know people in the industry yeah. and um, get yourself out there because there may be a time where you may be asking for a job or right. there may be an opportunity that pops up where they say, hey, you know what? I've done a lot of stuff with you. I think you're an awesome employee. I would love to do this with you. And so just network out there, see, see what's going on. It may benefit your current career or it may be an opportunity down the road. Yep. And then finally, is, again, comes back to something that hopefully everybody can do is know your budget monthly, but also know what things are adjustable. So oh, yeah. If I were to all of a sudden lose my job, what are those things that right away I could be just cutting back on, switching, adjusting? What are those things that I'm obligated to do mortgage, insurance, the payments that can't change. Yep. But what are those things that I can say, you know what, if it gets tight, here's the things I know I can slim down on. So for someone who's employed, loves their job, not looking around, these are just some of the things you can do just to be prepared for those what ifs, those big things. And also just in general, a little more peace of mind, having that emergency fund there, knowing where your budget is and knowing that I have some wiggle room if I need to. Yep. Those it's, are just it's not necessarily, you know, doomsday thinking to be thinking about these things. It's just good to be prudent about, you know, thinking about all of the outcomes that yep. can happen. Yep. And you, going back to your resume, even having an up-to-date resume, you may be applying for a board position or something on yep. there to say, oh, you know what? Here's some volunteer experience I've done, or here's why it, it matters to me. Or so, an internal position. <laughs> even internal. You're right. <laughs> You're going to want that as well. So yeah, yep. that's a great list, Josh. Thanks for sharing. Yep. All right, let's take a quick break, do a dad joke of the week. Ooh, I've been looking forward to this since last Thursday. Since the last dad joke of the week. So, rest in peace. I got a little shout out. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, it's uh, boiled water. Okay. Yep, you will be missed. (laughs) You will be missed. You will be missed. That's funny. Well, good one, Josh. I like that one. So Play play on words. It's it's a play on words. Yeah, missed versus missed. Missed. It's good. So, yes, we kind of stopped started looking at you know how you can you know be prepared as, as you're not even necessarily in that situation um let's look at a couple more things that we need to be doing regardless of what our job situation is and what look what someone maybe in the beginning of stages of a layoff should be doing right now so i got a list of six things we're going to go through here just take this with a open mind that these are things that could really uh, they could really set you up to to go further and to do better in that transition. So, number one, review your employment documents. So that can be, you know, what is offered as far as what your if if there's a restructuring going on and you've got a deal for your being your positions being eliminated or whatever. Know what is being offered for you in your situation based on maybe how long you've been there uh, or whatever. As well as like Josh had mentioned earlier, what are your restrictions as you might. Maybe you have restrictions in the industry or in the field or in the business. Um, that looks different for every company. It looks different for every industry. But be sure that you understand what those are um, so that you can have the most options available to you on the other side of that. Yep. And along with that, you know, there may be a severance package or something. Sometimes those may be negotiable. So when you're going through this process, you're meeting with your employer, whoever it is, don't be afraid to negotiate. There may be things they're willing to do uh, or have available to them where it's flexible. You may say, you know what? I'm more worried about healthcare costs. What can we do with this package to make sure my healthcare is covered? Or things like that. Have that discussion. Don't be afraid to talk and ask about it. See what is available. Number two, another thing to do is to talk to creditors. So suppose you have 
a loan outstanding on a variety of things. It could be a house, could be a car, could be a personal loan, could be anything. Yep. Talk to your creditors, even if you have the ability to pay it off now or to pay, you know, as as the payments are due. They just to let them know that you're going through this transition mm-hmm. because they may be more flexible um, if needed. You yep. know, hopefully you won't need that, and we would not want anyone to have to, you know, need to ask for that. Yep. But they may be, and that could save you money on extra fees and extra costs if necessary. And yep. they're more likely to work with you if you're not late on payments. If yep. you're calling up and say, "Hey, you know what? I just got laid off." You know, is there anything we can do to make this easier to make sure I can keep paying? Because what this, whoever this debt collector is, they want to get paid back. Because if they sell it to a debt collection agency, they're getting pennies on the dollar. Yep. If they can renegotiate with you and get you to keep paying, they're going to get more money in the long run. So you may even get, be able to get a lower interest rate, get like a couple months with no interest penalty. You know, you may be able to work it out. And if you reach out to them earlier and get that and say, you know, I'm letting you know now because. You know, I'm I'm on time. Everything's good, but I just want to give this heads up. Can can you work with me? You may be more likely to get something then than to say, "Hey, I know I haven't paid in the last three months. Is there anything you can right. do?" And they're probably already in the process yeah. of getting you out of there. Right. Be proactive. Yes. Be proactive. Number three, look into unemployment in your state. So when you are let go outside of your fault, yeah, this is not you quitting. Yeah. Then let go. Then you are usually eligible for unemployment and that varies by state and the unemployment also the different the amount's going to vary by state and situation as well and income brackets and all of that things but generally speaking you're going to get it you're going to qualify for a percentage of your however many months average salary or whatever Mm -hmm. um that's different for every state but look into what your state the requirements are what you've got to do to continue to collect that how long you can collect that don't forget about taxes Um, we've been in a, we've been in a unusual situation with COVID as it relates to unemployment taxes, but usually in most cases that is taxable income. So don't think it's just free money forever. Um, but yeah, look into what that is for your state. We know it's different for every state. Um, Ohio specifically, um, we, we know is different. Understand what are my obligations going back to what I have to do? You know, is there a requirement that I have to have so many job applications sent out or I have to have an yep. interview. What are the things I need to do to stay on that unemployment until I find that job? You're paying for this unemployment through your taxes and through working. So don't feel like, man, you know, I shouldn't be on this. It's not right for me. That's what it's set up for. It's for the interim period that on average six weeks where I'm in between jobs to help keep things going. So if you qualify for it, utilize it. Use that to your advantage to say, okay, maybe I don't need to tap as far into my emergency fund. That can actually stay for a different emergency. Right. Those type of things. But again, like Austin said, know what it is. Talk through. There's usually a website. Um, people you can call. It's pretty busy right now with everything that happened with COVID. But in general, it's usually there are pe- pretty helpful people there to get you. All right. Number four, look into Cobra. And by Cobra, I'm talking Shelby Cobras. You got to look into them. Yep. You want a fast, loud car. That way you can get to the job interview before anybody else. That's right. No, for real. Uh, Cobra is a five-letter acronym that makes everyone happy because in the finance industry, everything's acronyms and none of That's them right. make sense. This is actually a government one, which makes it even more Exciting. Exciting, usually. Yes. So, Josh, what is COBRA and what does it stand for? I'm sure everybody knows, but COBRA stands for the Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Reconciliation Act of 1985. Obviously, that's what it means. I mean, it's pretty much Everyone spelled out there. there. So, anyway, uh, what... But, by the way, uh-oh. President Reagan passed that. Yeah, 1984. So, Five. 1985, okay. So, generally speaking, were COBRA... Were you even born then? You weren't even born then. I wasn't then. born yet. Oh, man. You were a needy I, I was old. You're an itty bitty. Um, so yes, Cobra, in, it's really as it relates to your insurance. And it is, so if you are let go from your job, this is your ability in the interim of not having benefits in, your, in a new job to be able to continue to have the healthcare specific benefits from your old job. Yep. So the continuation of benefit program is kind of the way to think of it there. So as you're looking for jobs or even there's usually a window at a new job where you're not going to be eligible for health insurance or retirement or where that may be through that period you can pay usually the full amount of the premium plus 
alpha because mm-hmm. it's very expensive yep. they, typically. They allow the company to charge, I think it's 110%, somewhere right around there, of the premium. Right. So that covers all the costs that would be associated with someone helping run the program. Yep. So the company itself is not out anything for you continuing on the plan. Yes. So yeah, you can essentially pay to be on your old insurance longer while you were mm-hmm. unemployed. You get about 18 months normally, yeah. in normal, normal time frame. And we're going to reiterate, it is not cheap. No. You, so you may say, well, I'm only paying 60 bucks a month for my insurance at work. Well, that's because the company is covering some of those premiums. Or most of them. <laughs> You're yeah. going to be paying the full cost that they have per person for you for that insurance. And another thing to consider is your if you have a family on that plan... They may have been uh, subsidized in some way, shape, or form also. So you could it, it, you could see expensive. a huge spike. So yeah. generally speaking, it's best to keep that as short as of, of a time as possible. Yeah. Um, it's, it's also not generally good to go without insurance. Yeah. So you've got to balance those sort of things. Um, but it, even, even if you haven't, aren't in the situation yet, it's good to know what your COBRA policies are at your current employer yeah. um, if that time were to arise. And along with that, if you know you're going to be losing your job, use up your benefits while you're there. So if I need to go get a physical, if I need to go yeah. do this or that, or schedule it while you have that insurance mm-hmm. and use it up because that, that deductible, all that's going to be applied just for that insurance. If I know I'm going to be switching, I'm going to probably have a new deductible. So let me use up as much as I can, let's say, uh, dental appointments, whatever covers in your medical plan while you're still employed, go for it. Oh yeah, get the, get all use that. Use those. You benefits. should be the healthiest, cleanest teeth person. Everything, everything. Yep. And benefits and what happens to my vacation pay? If I don't get it paid out to me, I better use all those vacation days up yep. before my time's up. And the, as long as you're able to do those things, take advantage of all those benefits they're offering you. That's a great point that actually didn't make the list, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Mm-hmm. Vacation time, so paid time off, can be thought of two different ways. And I know people who work at companies that handle it two different ways. One is as soon as your anniversary date or the fiscal year or whatever it is, you get all, say you have three weeks vacation, you get it all at once. You can So if you retire the day after that date, you can cash out or three take weeks, it off, yeah. whatever you want to do. It, that is one way that companies do it. A lot of companies, on the other hand, do it in what's called accruals. Mm, throughout so, the year. Yeah, throughout the year. So you get all of those days up front at the beginning of the year. But if you were to leave midway through the year and you've taken more than half of those days, you will then owe the company for the difference there. Mm-hmm. Or vice versa. You know, If you left at the end of the year and hadn't used any of them, you could cash them out or whatever. Yep. So two different ways that those are handled. But as Josh was mentioning, either you know, know what the company's policy is on that so you can use it best to your advantage. If you, if you work at a place or the timing after you leave through a restructuring or whatever, that can also help you to... Bridge that yep. gap into the next job. Maybe some extra cash flow. So that oh, was not good. that was not even on the list. But we're yep. going to come back because the list continues. Yes. Number five, Josh. Write down all of your login information. So that can be four hundred one ks, healthcare plans, other insurance options through your company. Because you may have not needed to look at them or think about them at all while you were working, right? It's already taken care of. Yep. It's And actually, we, we like it when people don't look at their investments too much. That's mm-hmm. good. You're going to need to log in to those things. Yep. You'll need access to those. It, and, and whether that be a, through rolling things over to someone else or whatever that may be afterwards, you're going to need access. So yep. be sure that you know what those are. Um, there's also a lot of digital ways, because I'm a millennial and I do things digitally, to keep track of those passwords, and those may be worth yeah. looking into but as well. There, there may be just a lot of people that have it saved on their work computer and just not realize that, you know, if I'm somewhere else, I don't have that automatically logging me in. And you're right. So just make sure you have all the information you may need access to down the road. And last but not least, number six, ask for a letter of recommendation, parentheses. If you're leaving on good terms, I wouldn't ask for a letter of recommendation if you did something to get you fired, (laughs) um, that probably wouldn't go over too well. So number one, be a good employee so that you would get a recommendation. Mm -hmm. We always would like people to do that. But number two, don't be afraid to ask for it because if it's through no fault of your own, a a restructuring is happening. That's just how a lot of bigger companies and corporations work. Over time, there are cycles. Your, Your employer would likely be thrilled to help you out in this, in the transition. They feel bad about it too. I mean, it's not what they want to do. They don't, 
most of them don't get a kick out of firing people. Maybe there's some out there. I don't know. But in general, you know, especially when we're talking about like a restructuring layoffs, those type of things where, you know, they're maybe they're laying 20% of the workforce off. It's not that they are necessarily, you know, targeting you, but you just fit in that layoff category. And so you're saying, Hey, you know, no hard feelings. Would you be willing to write this for me? So as I'm looking, I have this additional piece that may get me above everybody else and help me out. And I'm sure they'd love to do that. Again, if you're leaving on good terms, you know, if your boss hates you, then you probably don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, and the same goes for references as well. Can yep. I use you as a reference? It's Perfect. a good question to ask. All right. Those are all great. Great points. Love it. You missed the most important one. Right? Ah. Yeah, that's okay. I'll talk to you about it. That's good. That's the most what I important got you one for. is if you're going through a transition like this, make sure you talk to your advisor. All right. Your advisors are here to help, right? They can help you read through all that paperwork we just talked about. They can help you understand those benefits. Just get them the paperwork. All right. They can also help you make sure that you are still going to be on track. What do I need to look for in the next job to make sure all my goals are still on track? What do I need to do maybe to catch back up? Maybe it takes me four months to find a job. Okay. Where am I at now? What do I need to do to get caught back up to be on track? So, Make sure you include your advisor in any big life-changing event is uh, always a good idea in general. Absolutely. And uh, I guess, you know, if, if you would like, if you have any questions about some situation that you might find yourselves in, feel free to ask us. Yeah. You can shoot us an email at hello at the com. We would be happy to talk to you about what's going on. And as always, check out our free gift to you. It's a brief list of eight principles of timeless investing. These are overarching investment themes meant to keep you on track to meet your long-term goals these things happen. These things can be a part of your financial picture. And uh, hopefully some of these things will keep you on track during that time. Josh, how can people help us grow this podcast? Yep. First of all, subscribe. That way you get our podcast every Thursday. Also, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That is a great way for us to rank higher. More people will find our podcast and hopefully be helped by it. And then if you have any ideas, questions about this job transition, or are going through one yourself, shoot us an email at hello at the Invested Dads. We'd love to help you. And then finally, if you know somebody going through this, share this episode. Hopefully, these tips will help them. All right. Well, until next week, have a great week. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful. Maddie, you're going to be in the office soon, maybe by the time you edit this.